Who invented the internet? Was it this guy? Or maybe this one? Or was it really this guy? Well, the internet wasn't just invented by one person. To get what we call the internet today, it took a long time and a lot of ideas from many different people. One of the first to formulate the general idea of the internet was J.C.R. Licklider. In 1962, the psychologist and computer scientist envisioned an intergalactic computer network that would allow for everyone to access data and programs. He even thought of online banking, cloud computing, and e-commerce, some of today's internet's most important features. In the same year, Licklider became the first head of the computer research program at DARPA, the Department of Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The agency was founded four years before, in 1958, and the Cold War had a lot to do with it. When the Soviet Union sent the Earth's very first satellite, Sputnik 1, into space on October 4, 1957, the United States felt left behind in the so-called space race. So to catch up and become the world leader in all new technological inventions, the president at the time, Dwight D. Eisenhower, created ARPA, which today is known as DARPA. Being linked to the Department of Defense, one of the agency's projects was to create a safe communication network between military command centers and remote missile bases, for example. Some think the network was meant to withstand a nuclear attack by the Soviet Union. Others think it's just an urban myth. Anyway, the next two crucial steps were 1. Implementing the new packet switching method and 2. Connecting computers so they could talk to each other. Hold up, packet switching method? So back in the day, telephones used the circuit switching method. Two phones communicate with each other through one direct line for as long as that line is established. But computer scientists from different institutes had realized circuit switching wasn't going to be the right choice here. Instead, the packet switching method was introduced. Packet switching means that a message is broken down into small packets, which then travel to the recipient through different routers. When the packets reach the destination, they are reassembled into the original message. Until this day, the packet switching method is used to communicate via the internet. Step 2, connecting computers so they could talk to each other, was first tried out in 1969. The plan for an interconnected network of computers, the ARPANET, was published by Lawrence G. Roberts in 1967. By the way, back in the 60s, computers didn't look like the very early devices anymore. For example, the ENIAC, or the Z3 of the 1940s. Instead, they looked like this Nova Mini computer, or the HP 2100. They were still pretty heavy, big, and mainly used for mathematical calculations. On October 29, 1969, Leonard Kleinrock, a UCLA professor in Los Angeles, and Charlie Klein, a UCLA student who was sent to the Stanford Research Institute close to San Francisco, exchanged the very first electronic message sent via the ARPANET, LO. The word was meant to be log in, but before the G was entered, the connection broke. The idea of sending messages between computers soon turned into the creation of, yep, you guessed it, email. In 1971, Ray Tomlinson sent the first email using the at sign to address a specific user and the user's machine. Tomlinson is today known as the inventor of email, and the program became popular very quickly across the ARPANET. So, the first email was sent in 1971, but can you believe that the first website only went online in 1991, 20 years later? That's when Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web, and everyone could finally access the internet. Let us know in the comments if you want to find out more about the World Wide Web and about the internet we know today. Please like and subscribe and tune in next time. See you!